Welcome everyone to another video tutorial. My name is Mr. Glindo and today we're going to be looking at slices and how to use them. So in the last video we installed Prusa Control. So I'm just going to load that up by clicking Command Space for Spotlight, typing in PRU and then selecting Enter on Prusa Control. This is the simplified slicer. So this is the one I suggest you use as much as possible. If you really need to use the more complex one, that is always an option, but it's a lot more fiddly. So I tend to try and stick to the Prusa Control whenever I can. So this does take a few seconds to load, and I might just speed this up. Okay, so now that it's loaded, what we're going to do is just have a quick rundown of what we can see here. So this is the view you get of the virtual printer. So you can imagine this is the, what we call the bed, the gray area here. This is what we've got to align our prints to because this is where it starts, and it all kind of uh, goes up from there, from that lowest level that touches the bed. The white outline box indicates the build area that you can actually print in on a Prusa i3 Mark III, which are the printers we've got. And so you're limited by this kind of space, I guess you could say. So we're going to import a model and have a look at that. So we're going to go File, Import Model File. Fortunately for us, we've got some sample objects here, and I'm going to do the 3D Hubs Marvin, because who doesn't love the little 3D Hubs Marvin? He's so cute. Now, with the 3D Hubs Marvin, um, it has already been placed in its optimal build um, orientation. What do I mean by that, you might ask? Well, build orientation is kind of like the most important thing to do with importing your models into a slicer. If I was to try and print this on any other layer, I would not have this nice, neat, flat surface to print on. So if I change this orientation to maybe 90 on the X, you can see now that he's lying on his back and in terms of what's in contact with the bed layer there, there's a tiny little patch and then it's a rounded surface. And this means that there's not much for your model to adhere to with the bed. And so we try to always optimize that to have the maximum flat surface touching. It's also important to understand the effect of printing upwards in layers means that sometimes um, there's specific orientations that are important for strength and or important for the detail in your design. And so that's another consideration to have. If you're printing a cylinder, for example, you might have a nice flat section on one side of the cylinder, but printing cylinders on their side lying along across the bed would not be very smart because it's probably going to deform slightly compared if you printed them straight up like a tower, and that would be more optimal. Other than that, we've got some standard settings on the right here. We use Prusa PLA, and I would always check, though, with the teacher involved with helping you print, whether that's myself, another teacher, we'll be able to tell you what material you can use, and so you select that from here. In this case, we're using Prusa PLA. Quality, well, this is all to do with the layer height, and so ultra-fine detail has a layer height of 0.05 compared to fast, which is 0.2. We're going to have a look at these and compare them in a minute. In fill, so I'm going to put this on ultra-fine so that you can see the differences. Infill, well, this is all to do with how much material goes on the inside of the space once it's done the outside layers. Obviously, the more solid uh, you want it to be, the higher the percentage infill should be, compared to hollow with zero to pretty much solid with 70% infill. Support, well, this is to do with the detail in your design, whether or not you need support. I'm going to leave this for none for now. And infill, I'm going to leave to 10%, which is sparse. I'm going to also leave the brim off and explain the differences by doing two uh, slices of this model, one with these settings and one with their opposites. So having uh, left this as is, I'm going to select the Generate button now, and this then slices the model, in our case the 3D Marvin, down into its layers, and then it transforms that into code, and so we can actually preview that. So once it's finished uh, generating the G-code preview, I can show you what that looks like. Okay, so the preview has generated, and it did take a bit of time because I had it on the highest quality detail we can have a look at. So it says here down the bottom, bottom print info, estimated time, 2 hours, 20 minutes, amount of filament, 81 centimeters. So quite a while for this size object. And the reason for that is because we have a super, super fine quality on there. So I'm going to just increase the height of the layer here. And if I select that and start dragging it up, you can see here the first couple of layers and they're 0.5 increments. And what you'll start to notice is that um, effectively what you've got is like a slice of the model as it moves up. Okay, what we're looking at is layers on the outside here. Those are called shells. So the number of shells kind of increases 
the thickness of the outside wall of your object compared to the infill here where you can see there's only two lines as like a cross there's not much infill in this model and then there's definitely no support so everything like for example the little Marvin's eyes there's nothing that connects the bottom of that eye to the top when it's printing which you can then pull out that can be really helpful for detail so you can see here where the eyes are there's nothing in that kind of gap and there's nothing below his ears either or his headphones maybe you could say it just kind of goes straight out and expects it to be able to be printing in midair with nothing underneath it which gravity might have a problem with so we usually wouldn't use these settings quite like this and you can see there it also expects his little uh, little antenna or the gimbal that you would attach to your uh, key rings maybe to also have no support underneath there okay I'm going to regenerate this code now with um, a fast quality so higher or thicker layers I'm going to increase the infill to quite dense at 50% that's quite dense and I'm also going to do from the uh, everywhere for support and turn brim on and we're going to compare the two okay so we've now generated our code for the Marvin again it was a lot faster and if you look at our print info it now takes less than an hour and it only and it uses a lot more filament so if you think about why well we've increased the layer height so there's not so many layers in fact there's four times less layers for it to print which massively reduces the amount of time it will take but it's using more filament um, and that's because we increased that infill by quite a lot from 10% to 50% so you know that's a uh, for a five times increase as well. So if we now have a look at the G-code preview, you can see that the first layer is huge compared to the other one. Instead of just having the legs, we've got the brim and we've got this green support and the color identifies that. So brim is just like a thin layer that goes on the base just to make sure it can't fall over or rock over and that can often stabilize really thin prints. You'd probably be okay with the Marvin considering its size compared to its um, uh, height, but in terms of thin skinny things like towers you may have to do brim and then if you look we've got a layer here for um, what we call support which is just these thin structures that will increase in height as we go and it does it every couple of layers because they do them really thick and that helps um, then basically attach to the Marvin so that it um, doesn't have any parts of it like here that are overhanging and not touching anything which might then be pulled down by gravity so you can see there where the infill is starting to touch the bottom of him there um, and you can see how that's on the side here and that will increase going up um, so that it supports his little headphones so that there's definitely nothing that's going to be touching on its own um, and you can see that kind of there so the other thing you can notice with this is that obviously the infill is huge so not only do we have now infill on the inside of his eyes uh, not sorry infill support in his eyes compared to last time I mean you can see that there as I'm scrolling through but also the amount of uh, infill on the inside of him is massive instead of just one cross we've got all those different hatches and that obviously is the increase due to infill now infill really affects basically um, how strong it is and how rigid it will be notice though but because we've went for a fast quality we have only got two layers on the outside now so two shells which also will um, uh, reduce the time it takes to print. So once you've done this and you've selected what you think are appropriate settings, generally what I would do is this would be when I would check it for a student. Um, but you know, if you've done this a couple of times, you'll get pretty used to it and you get used to the kind of settings you need to use and you'll have to start to be able to decide on what settings to use on your design, um, you know, with skill and practice basically. And so the next step after this is to go save G code. Now for us, um, we will just leave this on the desktop here because that's all I need to do with the G code. But you know, if you were really ready to print and I said, yep, go ahead, you might go over to one of the, the free 3D printers and grab the SD card, plug it in and save the G code directly to that SD card by selecting it under the devices list here. What does that G code look like? Well, just a quick reminder, if we go to the desktop, we've got that G code here and I can go open with and clicking other it'll allow me to open and choose what to pick it to open with and in this case we were looking for the text editor um, there it is and so that opens basic text files and you can see now you've got this code and this is what the 3d printer reads as instructions it's highlighted even what different bits of the code are so this is to do with prim this is to do with moving to first brim point still doing brim still doing brim brim takes a long time obviously a really long time but then we actually haven't moved much in our code if you look at the actual scroll bar 
and then we go down, you can see all these different sections where it's wipe and retract, perimeters, support, infill, infill, perimeter support. Now, so this is literally what the computer interprets within the 3D printer as its instructions and follows instructions to print your little 3D printed file. And so that's how we use a slicer to generate a G-code. And then obviously I've also explained slightly how to convert that G-code straight onto your um, SD card to print. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys use this and it'll be really exciting to start using the 3D printers. I hope you're keen. All right, Mr. G out.